Hi there, this is David and welcome to the Top 10 Worst JRPG Dungeons Nintendo DS Edition. The DS was an RPG powerhouse filled with great AAA games, as well as lesser known hidden gems. Going through all these titles to find the absolute worst dungeons was quite the task. They were sprinkled between some really great RPGs and some gutter trash ones too. So without further ado, let's get the celebration of nightmarish dungeons begin. Number 10, Nostalgia, Tower of the Sun. This is the final dungeon of the game, and as such, they made it much more complex than any previous dungeon. It's not just a teleport maze. There's also switches that you have to press to activate certain teleporters or make those same teleporters take you to different areas of the tower. As you climb your way through here, it gets worse with having to turn on multiple switches at the same time while keeping others off to have a single teleporter take you to three different areas of the tower. Thankfully, the designers do provide a map so it's not too horrible, so I'm just going to leave it here at the top of our list. Number 9, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, Mount Coronet. Victory Road and its 6 HMs was a close second here, but Mount Coronet wins out just because of how often the game forces you to go through it. I mean, Having a mountain range sprawl throughout the entire region of Sinnoh is a cool concept, but the execution fell flat. For those unaware, Mount Coronet essentially splits the entire world map in half, and if you want to cross over to the other side, it's quite the hike. Having a mountain as a centerpiece to a region seems pretty neat, and there are some good things here, such as mysterious ruins at the summit, cave complexes to navigate, and an exterior to climb. On paper, this looks amazing, but in practice, it's a mess. You'll be going back to Mount Coronet all the time. The amount of backtracking the game puts you through in this place is astronomical. And to get through it, you're going to need plenty of HMs to fully get access to this zone just to deal with downright annoying things like the fog. It just breaks the pacing of the game when you have to crisscross a mountain range after every single town. What were they thinking? Number 8, Lufia Curse of the Sinstrels, Tanbell Mine. I've gotta say, having to revisit every single dungeon during the second half of the game was pretty annoying, but nothing can top the first visit of the Tanbell Mine and the awful minigame that you have to play there. The actual dungeon itself isn't so bad. It's a pretty standard mine coupled with a pretty standard puzzle of hitting switches to turn the minecart tracks different directions. There's also an added minigame of having to collect crystals scattered throughout the mine to activate an energy board to move on. The more you gather, the better the prize. So far this seems pretty good, and it is. So why is it on this list? Well, gamers of a certain age will remember the pain of this, and here we have a similar puzzle, only without the NES difficulty, but with all of the frustration, especially because, like in Battletoads, it comes up so soon in the game. Basically, you have to match Birdie and Betty's movements exactly to their rhythm. One misstep and you start over. I don't know about you guys, but part of the reason that I play RPGs is so that I don't have to deal with things like this. I'm just not good at timing. Thank God when you're forced to come back here later in the game, you don't have another round of this minigame. Number 7, Saga 3, Goddess of Destiny, Mount Goat. If this looks familiar, it's because it's actually a Japan-only remake of Final Fantasy Legend 3. It was translated and plays similarly except towards the end where it just becomes a huge grind fest. Mount Goat is the penultimate dungeon of the game and drops you off straight into the final dungeon, Ragnar's Castle. There aren't any god-awful puzzles or mazes or switches or anything like that on this mountain. Instead, they make it terrible the old-fashioned way forcing you to fight and encounter every 5 seconds, or maybe even more often than that. See those little red dots on the map screen? Those are all the monsters, and they're all faster than you are, and they all relentlessly chase you down. You end up having more encounters in this place with on-screen encounters than you ever would have had with random encounters. I've never seen more on-screen encounters stuffed in narrow hallways like this in my life. I mean, what's the point of even having them if you're completely unable to avoid them? And to make matters worse, there's 10 areas of this hell to go through. 
thank God for fast forwarding and emulation. I couldn't imagine playing this on the actual DS. Number 6 Golden Sun, Dark Dawn, Belinsk Ruins. I guess Camelot didn't learn its lesson with the Lost Age and continued its trend of making absolutely enormous dungeons that take hours upon hours to complete. Though, in the game's defense, half of that could just be your party members jabbering on for a year and a day, but I digress. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for a good puzzle, but I can't stay in one dungeon for such long periods of time, and god forbid if you put the game down for a week and pick it back up again, you'll be so lost that you might as well start the entire game over with again. The puzzles here are imaginative, but they take so long, and there's just so many of them. You'll be playing killer chests like in Harry Potter, switching on cog pieces to turn gear puzzles, crushing and raising pillars, as well as raising and lowering water levels, and this is just in the main dungeon. Once you're done there, you're shepherded in into four elemental rooms, each with their own puzzles to activate the appropriate planet and progress on. Then, when you're finally through, your reward is that the dungeon is just a huge point of no return. Number 5. Mario and Luigi Partners in Time, Shroob Castle. This place seriously never ends. There are four floors, each outfitted with its own puzzles and confusing layout, and a wonderful sewer portion! You know how that thrills me. The castle itself is tedious to navigate because each floor is just ginormous with gates, pipes to go through, and constant switching between the grown-up brothers and the babies. For a series that does such a good job keeping the plot constantly moving, Shrewd Castle is like hitting a brick wall, and while the dungeon is sprawling, battles don't do you any favors either, because of the soul bubbles. Let's talk about these little shits. When you initiate an encounter with them, they'll be accompanied by a partner whom they'll automatically heal once you attack them. So normally people would say, well, let's just kill the partner first, then the soul bubble. But if you do that, they'll counter by reviving their partner. Also, they attack both Mario and Luigi ridiculously fast. It's almost impossible to dodge. They're bloody obnoxious and the jewel atop the crown in this horrid place. Number 4. Tales of Innocence? Pretty much all of them. The sadists who designed the dungeons in Legendia must have been giving a second chance to torture their fans here. Truth be told, all of the dungeons in this game just suck. They're all massive, yet devoid of charm or character because all the rooms look exactly the same. They're just long, narrow hallways and square rooms connecting them. It's almost as if they used Tinker Toys to build these dungeons. It's such a lazy copy-paste job. This is made even worse because you're going to find yourself grinding outside of each dungeon because of the massive difficulty spike that they have, especially in the Ashihara Tombs and the Kelm Volcano. Also, while you're plodding along in these mazy dungeons, there's normally just one save point, and while the encounters are on screen, Half of the time they're placed directly in front of doorways so you're forced to fight them to move on. Then, in the biggest dick move of them all, once you complete these monstrosities, you have to walk all the way back out. There's no quick jump out or exit spell here. Game designers knew that walking out of a dungeon manually sucked back in the NES days. Why are we still putting up with it now? Number 3. Sands of Destruction, Block 4. Ugh. Pick your poison with this awful game. Most of the dungeons contain some downright terrible gimmicks, such as forcing you to enter places in a specific order, and if you make one wrong move, you get warped back to the beginning to start all over again. And each and every dungeon here is a maze as well. But the worst of the bunch is block four. Just to get there, you have to go through teleport hell in the primal cataract, where as I said before, one wrong move sends you back to the start, and when you're finally done, you have to deal with Block 4, the final dungeon of the game. And here we're greeted with a Switch puzzle, which really can't be called a puzzle because it's more of a trial and error, because again, if you pull one wrong Switch, you're sent back to the start. Oh, so much fun. Also, the game designers and all their wisdom made it so that you can't run from any of the encounters here. And after you deal with the Switch puzzle, You'll move on to a computer terminal which tells you to go all the way back to block 4 and collect 4 rectangular modules. Ugh. Do it and take them back to the terminal, 
only to be told to go all the way back to Block 4 again and collect four diamond modules. My god. Once you've done that, you go back to the terminal, which now wants, you guessed it, more modules in Block 4. Yeah. This place makes you backtrack a total of three times to run around and find these stupid modules to move on. It's painful. Number two, Okamedon, The Dark Realm. For such a great game, they really dropped the ball on the final area. It's quite possibly the worst final dungeon ever made, if you could really even call it a dungeon. Before coming here, you're greeted with a ton of plot twists, so you want to get to the end to see what happens next. So instead of a fulfilling dungeon filled with artistry and puzzles, they throw you into a gauntlet where you have to go from one platform to the next fighting random battles and watching a cutscene between each one. And we aren't talking about just a few encounters here, it's like 30 of them. And you have to refight all of the bosses too, it's just so tedious and obvious padding. Honestly, towards the end of any game my patience starts wearing thin and I really don't want to put up with stupid stuff like this. I just want to get to the end, have a good time doing it, and see a full satisfying conclusion. Not have random battle gauntlets that take forever. Pick one or the other, a great final dungeon with random encounters, or a boss rush. But don't choose a boss rush with needless random encounters, and certainly not this many either. Number one, Black Sigil, Blade of the Exiled, The House of Blackstone. Every single dungeon in this entire game was an anxiety-inducing race against time because of the lack of save points, coupled with the preponderance of glitches and freezes. But let's pretend for one moment that those glitches don't exist and this game was actually well made. The House of Blackstone would still be a complete nightmare. This is an elevator dungeon where you can only go one way. There's no riding back and forth in case you mess up. Also, each elevator will not drop you off at the next floor. Many times the elevators will actually skip floors, making it insanely frustrating to plan out where you actually need to go. So all that seems terrible enough, but here's the real kicker. You can't use any magic whatsoever inside either. And this is a portion of the story where there's no town that you can backtrack to. You're literally sent up a creek without a paddle. There's only one place to go to, and the recovery point is nestled deep inside, not right in front in case you need to grind or anything like that. Then, to gild the lily, you're split from your party, dragging out the battles even more and pretty much forcing the unprepared player into certain death. You'd better have clairvoyance to know to bring a ton of extra healing items to have any hope of making it through this death trap. Well, that's it for the top 10. Hope that you guys enjoyed this, but let's look at some honorable mentions. I left them out of the main countdown because while the dungeons are awful, the genres that they belong to are kind of questionable for this list. Eridanus in Strange Journey, and the Temple of the Sea King in Phantom Hourglass. So, what are your worst dungeons on the Nintendo DS? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments, and as always, have a good day.